You can do it and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. In this episode, I'm gonna tell you exactly what we should be doing daily as Jesus followers, so let's get into it. Hey everybody, my name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the great privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. Our mission, as always, is to be a lifeline by leading people, becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. I believe no matter where you're watching from or how you tuned into this message today, I believe God has a message for you, a message of hope, encouragement, and love that He wants to speak into your life today. As always, if you would be so kind as to like, comment, and share This content, it really helps us get the word out, and I believe I've got a good one for you today. Have you ever been confused about whether you are on the right track or not? Like, I'm trying to follow Jesus, but I'm not sure um, what I'm supposed to be doing, especially if things are getting tough, especially if things are hard. I'm not sure if I'm on the right track or if I'm doing the things I need to do. Maybe you're new to faith, but even if you've been trying to follow Jesus a long time, you might feel this way. How do I know that I'm on track? As a man who got saved as an adult and lived a pretty crazy lifestyle, let me tell you that there's um, especially um, a lot of times in my life where I felt this way. Um, There was a season in my life where all I did was in my free time, I would play my guitar and play worship songs. Like, cause I, I just wanted to I wanted to know that I was doing the right thing. I wanted to know that I was on track. I wanted to know that I wasn't going to go off base. You know, as some of you feel me, you know that like when my free time comes, I just want to know that I'm doing the right thing. So I just did the most spiritual thing I could think of, which was play worship songs. (laughs) And in that season, I recorded 12 songs, all original, all me. And so I'm not saying doing that is all bad, but I am thinking that there is a more strategic approach to us um, doing things in our free time and doing things on a regular basis that are going to be a benefit to us long term as Christians. So I want to tell you this more strategic approach. There's three things that I want you to sprinkle in to your everyday life that are going to really, it's really going to help you be a blessing, things that you can run with. um, Because, you know, if I did this every single week, if we did this midweek mentor and I didn't give you anything that you could hold on to and run with, uh, what kind of pastor would I be? Not that good. So when you cut through all the complicated schedules and things that you're trying to do every day, it really boils down to uh, the fundamentals of following Jesus that will make you, or if you don't do them, they will break you. Thing number one, just read. You can do this. Just read. Just read your Bible. There is no right or wrong way to do this. Honestly, I've, I've heard of some pretty weird ways like just opening your Bible, you know, open your Bible randomly and this is my verse of the day, you know. Um, honestly, though, if you're struggling with it, there's, there's no wrong way to do this. As long If you're doing it every single day, then you are doing it right. You should be reading your Bible every single day. You should be finding time for it. There should never be a day where, and I know, hey, before you feel condemned, I've missed days of Bible reading too in my life, all right? Don't worry about that. But these are things that we need to focus on. These are things that we need to just do. You can do it. Um, reading your Bible is one of those things. I want to read to you 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us to do what's right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. That means you don't even have to understand 100% what it is that you're reading right now. What? What, what? I thought we were supposed to have our commentaries out and those are all good things. You can have your Bible dictionary out, you have your commentary out, but what I'm telling you is, is the word of God is like a tea bag. No, <clears throat> we can do better than that. The word of God is like a French press. There we go, much better. The word of God is like a French press and the word of God is like the grounds, okay? If you've ever done French press coffee or, a, or tea, if you're a tea drinker, you, you put the tea bag in there, you put the grounds in there And you just throw it in and the longer you leave it in there and the more you put in there, 
the more it changes the nature of the water it's been put in. The Word of God is like coffee grounds or like a tea bag, and you are the water. You're the water. You're hot water. You are hot water, baby. <laughs> you can do this. Now, you put that word in you on a regular basis and leave it in you and just leave it in you, it is going to change who you are. You know, I can remember being um, a transport driver um, before I became a pastor. I was working as a non-emergency medical transportation driver and I had my Bible with me and in between stops, like I would, I would stop and, you know, have a break or have a minute and I remember reading my Bible um, for five minute increments, like five minutes, not a long time, but just little tiny breaks here and there. I would crack it open and read a verse, read, you know, a chapter, whatever I could. And I had a weird translation back then. And I didn't always understand like what it was saying, but I knew this, I knew I needed to be in my Bible. And let me tell you now that has shaped me. That season of life has shaped me, has changed me because I was just putting the word of God in my life. Do you want to see a long-term change in your life? Then just do this. Just read your Bible. Got it? Cool. Thing number two is this. Just pray. I want you to pray in the morning. Uh, you can pray at night. You can pray in the afternoon. But this is something that we just need to do. And we need, it needs to be a part of our daily life. Let me read you uh, Luke 11, mm, chapter, yeah, chapter 11. Verses 9 and 10. Listen to this. And so I tell you, this is Jesus speaking. So I tell you, keep on asking, you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. The right time to pray is constantly. Man, anytime you think about it, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Man, it's not just Medea who can walk around praising the Lord and saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That can be you. And let me tell you, it's very biblical and it's the right thing to do to just do this. Have this open conversation with God. Um, an illustration I have for this is um, my neighbors and I, my wife, me and my wife and uh, a bunch of our neighbors, we have this text thread going. If you've ever been a part of a text thread, you know that they can just keep on going forever and ever. Amen. That is exactly like, like a group text and everybody's chiming in. That is exactly what our prayer life should be like. It should be like this text thread with God that is just ongoing. And anything on your mind, you're just sharing with God. Anything on your mind, you're just sharing with God. And He's sharing things back with you because your, your ears are open. The, the thread is open for you to be, to be just texting with God, texting with God all day long. Um, think of pr constant prayer, less of a phone call, because these days, phone call, man, it's an event. Man, I got to answer the phone and I got to make sure nobody's around me. But text messaging is different. Text messaging is, is quick. It's easy. It's simple. And it's constant. That's what our prayer life really is supposed to be like. Our prayer life is supposed to be more like text messaging, messages back and forth. It doesn't have to be so articulate. You don't have to be as ritualistic about prayer, and listen to me, you can be. I have once, uh, once a week, I go into the church and I pray for a solid hour with worship music praying. It's an event, baby. It is going for it. But my actual prayer life with God is actually more like a text thread that is just ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. This is something that we just need to do if we want to know that we're on the right track with God. The right thing to pray about is everything and the right time to pray is constantly. Last one is this, just worship. And I'm not talking about worship music either. Uh, you might be thinking about worship being just music, but as a pastor, it's my responsibility to tell you that worship is far more than just music. It includes music, but it also includes every single thing we could possibly do in our life because sacrifice and transforming our mind is worship to God. And so I even, like, I'm trying to teach myself to quit calling that 20 minutes before church worship because that's if that's if we call that worship then then what are we doing for the rest of the time not worship that doesn't make any sense it's it's worship in music or it's worship with serving or it's worship with the word you understand so this is something we need to do every day and i'm talking about music but i'm not just talking about music i think this is the most 
one of the most neglected disciplines of the modern day Christian. And I know that because I are one. I am a modern day Christian. And so I can tell you with confidence and from a personal place that this can be the most neglected part of our daily walk with Jesus. And it shouldn't be. Romans 12 verses 1 and 2 say this. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. This is the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. This is important. I'm going to talk about this how worship can transform the way we think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. Listen, this is so critical. I should have said it first because I hope that you still are tuned in for this. The best way I know to transform your mind is by choosing well what you put in to your eyes and to your ears. I'm going to say that again real slow. The best way I know to transform your mind is to choose well what you let into your eyes and what you let into your ears. These, the eyes and the ears are like the gate to the heart and mind because what we consistently see will transform our mind. What we consistently hear will transform our mind. And God says we need to transform our minds, let God transform our minds by, by serving Him. And so, what does that mean? Worship music and wholesome TV. These things are a benefit to us. Worship music. I have worship music playing in the background because why? It's just flowing into my ears and it's transforming my mind. I don't even have to notice it happening. I, all I know is it's flowing in and so it's transforming my heart. This, is, this could be one of the most passive and easy ways to transform your life. Just transform what's coming into your ears and what's coming into your eyes. Worship music and wholesome TV are a great benefit to your life. Angry or lustful music and unwholesome TV, those things are not a benefit to your life. Now, I'm not sitting here over here telling you what to do, but I am telling you what I know is true. Years ago, um, I... Christian. I'm a saved person, a Christian. I'm even a pastor. Okay. And I, you know, am going through Netflix and I'm like, I saw this one show. I'm like, that looks interesting. That looks like a, that looks like people I know. And it was a show called Breaking Bad. And so I watch a season or two. Let me just tell you that transformed the way I thought for a season. I started walking around like I wanted to kill somebody like a gangster. I, I, it just, it changed me. I was just watching it only at night and it just had such an effect on me. I didn't even realize hindsight. I can, I, I'm a kind of a sensitive person now. I've been desensitized to things like that. Um, kind of like grotesque TV or even like music with cussing in it. Um, it just, I don't know. It just shakes me a little bit because I've I've resensitized myself to it. I used to be unsensitized, desensitized. Now I'm resensitized, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing to be sensitive to those sorts of TV. I can tell you from experience, man, that that what we watch, what we choose to watch, what we choose to listen to has such a great impact. I can't even begin to describe how important that is in our life. So my application for you to this is this. Keep it simple, okay? Keep it simple today. I want you to just keep these things simple. Remember the three things I told you. Remember that we just need to be reading our Bibles. Just do it. You can do it. We just need to be praying. You can do this. You can do it. Just do it. We just need to be worshiping God by watching what we go, what puts into our eyes and what goes into our ears. The best advice I can give you is, is don't stress about these things, but just keep it simple and keep doing it because stress won't add a single day to your life. I want to leave you with this scripture, Matthew 6. One of my life verses right here, Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 and 34. So don't worry about these things saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts and minds of unbelievers, but your heavenly father already knows all of your needs. 
Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow brings its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Can I get an amen on that? Most of the time there is nothing you can do about what you might be worried about, what others might think, what others might say, what others might be saying about you, thinking about you. You can't affect that. What what people saying the things in your life you should be doing. But listen listen to this voice, my voice, a, a positive and encouraging voice for you today. Just focus on the big three. Focus on the things you, you know you should be doing and you will be on the right track. God will minister to you. And what I mean by that is he will work with you and work on you as you just focus on the basics, as you focus on those things. Don't forget the legend Jerry Rice. You know how he got great? Basics, basics, basics. He knew how to run the route. He knew how to catch a football. Let's focus on the basics today. Because the point is we can tend to complicate things. And we need to just remember that all we can do is all we can do. And what we can do is we can read our Bibles, we can pray, and we can worship on a daily basis. No matter if you're new, no matter if you're if you're old, <laughs> no matter if you're new in your faith, no matter if you're old in your faith, new to church, tuning in, you don't even know God. I'm, I'm telling you some basic things that are going to help you if you're interested in going that route. Jesus knows what's in our hearts and if we trust in him, he will make us able to handle life better than we ever could. Please use the links in the description if you'd like to make any next steps with us. As always, if you would continue to like, comment, and share this message with someone, it might bless. You never know who's one invite away, who's one message away from really getting it and um, taking a step forward uh, today. And if this content blessed you, be sure to let us know in the comments. It um, really goes a long way to not only me, but everyone else who's going to be joining us on the midweek mentor schedule. I really hope you enjoyed it. And let me just pray for you before we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every single person listening to the sound of my voice right now. I pray for blessings in the area of their finances, in the area of relationships, in the area of health, Lord, in the season that we're in, 2020. And I I pray that people's health would be not compromised today, that we would put our trust in you and know that By your stripes, we are healed. And I also pray for the psychological, mental, and emotional health of the people listening to this message right now and our families. Lord, I pray these things in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. We love you. God bless you. And we will see you again very soon.